welcome back to another video so as you would have seen from the title and the thumbnail you would know that today we are going to be talking about 23 2023 releases that i am anticipating <laughs> that was a bit difficult to say I was considering splitting the releases into the first half and second half of 2023 but there weren't enough anticipated releases to hit 23 for just the first half so I'm just gonna do the whole year of what I know is going to come out and if there is enough for a second part of this video then I will do a second part Let's start by month and I guess by order, chronological order. So the first book that I am anticipating is X's and O's which is coming out January 10. So this book is by Amy Leah who wrote Set On You which I had previously read and I thought it was okay. I gave it like 3 stars. I finished my Goodreads goal with this one apparently if you want to watch that video. But okay, so let's talk about the blurb for X's and O's. So this one is about a romance novel obsessed social media influencer who revisits her exes on her hunt for true love in this romantic comedy. Romance novel connoisseur Tara Chen has had her heart broken 10 times by 10 different men, all of whom dumped her because of her stage 5 clinger tendencies. Nevertheless, Tara is determined to find the one. The only problem classic meet cutes are dead thanks to modern dating apps so tara decides to revisit her exes in hopes of securing her very own trope worthy second chance romance boston firefighter trevor mccalf will be the first to rush into a burning building but the last to rush into a relationship love just isn't his thing when his new roommate tara enlists him to help her reconnect with her exes he reluctantly agrees but tara's journey is leading him to discover his own new chapter the more time they spend together the more tara realizes trevor seems to be the only one who appreciates her authentic dramatic self. To claim the happily ever after, can Tara and Trevor read between the lines of their growing connection? Yeah, okay, so actually I didn't know that this was about second chance romance, which I have not read a lot from, so not sure whether I really enjoy it, but it's by this author that I really enjoy reading from. The reviews for it seem quite good as well, so I'm like quite anticipating this basically. So yeah, that was the first one. Also coming out on January 10 is Hellbent which is the second book in the Alex Stern, I think it's a duology by Liba Dugo. So I actually have the first book, which is Ninth House by Liba Dugo. And it's still wrapped in the plastic, as you can see, because I wanted to wait for Hellbent to come out before I started reading it. Since this is the second book in the duology, it's coming out 10 January. I don't want to spoil myself or you, so I'm just going to read you the blurb for Ninth House instead. Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class, a dropout and the sole survivor of a horrific unsolved crime, the last thing she wants is to cause trouble. Not when Yale was supposed to be her fresh start, but a free ride to one of the world's most prestigious universities was bound to come with a catch. Alex has been tasked with monitoring the mysterious activities of Yale's secret societies, societies that have yielded some of the most famous and influential people in the world. Now there's a dead girl on campus and Alex seems to be the only person who won't accept the neat answer the police and campus administration have come up with for her murder. Because Alex knows the secret societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead, and sometimes they prey on the living. So I heard this was kind of like dark academia also. Yeah, if I want to read Hellbent, I have to start reading Nine Health soon, but we shall see. So that was the second book. Also, I wanted to say, I forgot to preface this before I started, but I'm following the release dates based on what it is shown or listed on Goodreads. So I know that sometimes the publication dates may change, but this is the information that I have currently after searching on Goodreads. Next book coming out January 14 is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. This video will have gone up already but I read the winners of the 2021 Goodreads Choice Awards winners and the winner of the horror category was the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This author also wrote Salvan Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, My Best Friend's Exorcism as well as Horror Store, all three of which are super hyped on the book community so I'm really intrigued to read this author's latest release as well. Let me read you what How to Sell a Horror House is about. Every childhood home is haunted and each of us are possessed by our parents. When their parents die at the tail end of the coronavirus pandemic, Louise and Mark Joyner are devastated but nothing can prepare them for how bad things are about to get. The two siblings are almost totally estranged and couldn't be more different. Now, however, they don't have a choice but to get along. The virus has passed and both of them are facing bank accounts ravaged by the economic meltdown. Their one asset, their childhood home. They need to get it on the market as soon as possible because they need the money. 
Yet before her parents died, they taped newspaper over the mirrors and nailed shut the attic door. Sometimes we feel like puppets controlled by our upbringing and our genes. Sometimes we feel like our parents treat us like toys or playthings or even dolls. The past can ground us, teach us and keep us safe. It can also trap us and bind us and suffocate the life out of us. As disturbing events stack up in the house, Louise and Mark have to learn that sometimes the only way to break away from the past, sometimes the only way to sell a haunted house is to burn it all down. So when I first read this blog, I was instantly reminded of Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I read in one of my reading blogs, I'll link it up above, and I gave that five stars. So I instantly thought that I would really enjoy this book as well, which is why I put it on this list, right? So hopefully I will enjoy this as well. Next book coming out January 17 is Mysteries of Thorn Manor. Margaret Rogerson also wrote An Enchantment of Ravens as well as Sorcery of Thorns, which is one of my favorite books of 2021. You can check out the video up above. This story is linked to Sorcery of Thorns, yes. So this is book 1.5, Mysteries of Thorn Manor. It's a novella. This is going to be spoilers for Sorcery of Thorns, so I will just read you the blurb for Sorcery of Thorns. All sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has known that as long as she has known anything. Raised as a foundling in one of Ostomir's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among magical grimoires that rattle beneath iron chains, capable of transforming into grotesque monsters if provoked. When an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimoire, Elizabeth is accused of treason and sent to face justice in the capital. With no one to turn to but her sworn enemy, the sorcerer Nathaniel Thorn and his mysterious demonic servant, she finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. Not only could the great libraries go up in flames, but the world along with them. Ah, I'm very excited that Margaret Rogerson decided to release another book in this because it was originally a standalone, right? I'm, ah, even though it's a novella, I'm very excited. I'm so, I'm so excited, okay. The next book coming up January 24th is Begin Again by Emma Lord. So actually, a lot of releases coming out in January. Emma Lord also wrote Tweet Cute, which I have actually not gotten the chance to get to just yet, but this came as a very high recommendation by my real-life friend who reads. <laughs> so I bought it. Why I put Begin Again on this list? Let me read to you the blurb first, then you will know why, okay? As usual, Andy Rose has a plan. Transfer from community college to the hyper-competitive Blue Ridge State, major in psychology and maintain her lifelong goal of becoming an iconic self-help figure despite the nerves that have recently thrown her for a loop. All it will take is ruthless organisation and her trademark unrelenting enthusiasm to pull it all together. By the moment Andy arrives, the rest of her plans go off the rails. Her rocky relationship with her boyfriend Connor only gets more complicated when she discovers he transferred out of Blue Ridge to a community college. Her roommate Shay needs a major and despite Andy's impressive track record of being the fixer, she's stumped on how to help. And Milo, her coffee-guzzling grump of an RA with sea foam green eyes, is somehow disrupting all her ideas about love and relationships one sleep-deprived wisecrack at a time. But sometimes when all your plans are in rubble at your feet, you find out what you're made of. And when Andy starts to find the power of her voice as the anonymous squire on the school's legendary pirate radio station, the same one her mother founded years before she passed away, Andy learns that not all the best laid plans are necessarily the right ones. Why I wanted to read this book? One, because it's a university setting. Two, the main character is majors in psychology, which is the same major as me, so I would like to live vicariously through her, you know. And I just love romance, so like... The last book coming out in January is one of my most anticipated ones. It is Chain of Thorns. Okay, so I am not going to read you the blurb because I don't want this to be spoiled because I have actually yet to read Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron. So if you didn't know, Chain of Thorns is the last book in this trilogy, the Last Hours trilogy by Cassandra Clare. So I have been holding back because I wanted to wait for it to finish. So this is Chain of Gold. I have gotten this for quite long so it's a bit dusty look at how thick this is and this is chain of iron so i have to get to both before i read chain of thorns and before i even start chain of gold i would like to reread the infernal devices trilogy because the last hours trilogy is based on the descendants of the main characters in the Infernal Devices trilogy. Yeah, so I'm super excited. I've, I haven't read Cassandra Clan like this year at all. So 2023 is gonna be the year. It's, she's back. She's back. Hi, this is voice over Elise coming over here because I can't believe that. Oh, I forgot to talk about this book. The chaos has already started everybody. Just warning you that. <laughs> 
things are going to be a little bit all over the place at the moment but i missed out a book that was meant to come out in january so the book that i'm going to talk about is finley donovan jumps the gun it is actually the third book in the finley donovan series i believe it is the last book in this series but i'm also not sure anyway because this is the third book in the series i'm not going to read you the blurb but it's basically the first book is finley donovan is killing it and the second book is finley donovan knocks m dead finley donovan is killing it is about this writer who ends up becoming a hitman hit woman hit woman because somebody hires her after overhearing her talk about this plot for her book with her literary agent and the person thought that she is a hit woman but she is not she ended up taking the job because she really needs the money and so this is kind of like this comedic mystery comedic contemporary and it's just ridiculous similar to Dale for aunties so yeah this book is coming out in january 31st and i am so sorry for missing out this book in the video that's all. Now we're moving on to February. Only two books. The first one is These Infinite Threads, which is the sequel and I think the concluding book to this duology to this Woven Kingdom. So much thanks to Times Reads for sending this over to me to review. And look at all my tabs. I think I did a reading vlog on this. If I remember, I'll link it up above for you as well. Oh, but it doesn't say that it is the concluding book maybe it'll be a trilogy i'm not so sure but okay as always i'm not going to tell you the blurb of these infinite threads but just look at how beautiful this cover is instead i'll tell you the blurb for this woven kingdom for all the world alicia is a disposable servant not the long lost heir to an ancient jinn kingdom forced to hide in plain sight the crown prince kamran has heard the prophecies foretelling the death of his king but he could never have imagined that the servant girl with the strange eyes the girl he can't put off his mind would one day uproot his kingdom and the world. This woven kingdom is a story of clashing empires, forbidden romance, and a long forgotten queen who must claw away through darkness to reclaim her throne, rebuild her kingdom, and save her people from the half life they've been forced to live. The next book is coming out February 21 Best Served Hot by Amanda Elliott, who also wrote Sadie on a Plate. Let me read to you the blurb. By day, Julie Zimmerman works as an executive assistant. After hours, she's at Julie Z Eats NYC, a social media restaurant reviewer with over 50,000 followers. As much as she loves her self-employed side gig, what Julie really wants is to be a critic at a major newspaper, like the New York Scroll. The only thing worse than the Scroll's rejection of her application is the fact that smarmy social media averse society boy, Bennett Richard McAllister Wright, snagged her dream job. While at the Central Park Food Festival, Julie confronts the annoyingly handsome Bennett about his outdated opinions on social media and post the resulting video footage. Julie's follower count soars and so does the scrolls. Julie and Bennett grudgingly agree to partner up for a few reviews to further their bus, online bus obviously. Over tapas, burgers and more, Julie and Bennett connect over their shared love of food but when the competitive fire between them turns extra spicy, they have to decide how much heat their relationship can take. So what I enjoyed reading about from City on a Plate is actually the food elements. So the book I gave three stars, but I really remembered the descriptions of the food and how the author does a good job at doing that. This one is kind of like a fake dating, fake partnership. So I was super intrigued by that and with the element of food as well. So I was drawn in and that's why it's on this list. So yeah, that's for February. Let's move on to March. For the March releases, all three of them come out on the same day, March 14th. So the first one is Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jessie Q. Sutanto who wrote Dao A for Aunties and For Aunties and a Wedding which I have a reading vlog for Dao A for Aunties. You can watch it up above as always. But I really enjoyed that book. Yes. Vera Wong is a lonely little old lady, a lady of a certain age who lives above her forgotten tea shop in the middle of San Francisco's Chinatown. Despite living alone, Vera is not needy, oh no. She likes nothing more than sipping on a good cup of oolong and doing some healthy detective work on the internet about what her Gen Z son is up to. Then one morning, Vera trudges downstairs to find a curious thing, a dead man in the middle of her tea shop. In his outstretched hand, a flash drive. Vera doesn't know what comes over her, but after calling the cops like any good citizen would, she sort of swipes the flash drive from the body and tucks it safely into the pocket of her apron. Why? Because Vera is sure she would do a better job than the police could possibly do because nobody sniffs out a wrongdoing quite like a suspicious Chinese mother with time on her hands. Vera knows the killer will be back for the flash drive 
All she has to do is watch the increasing number of customers at her shop and figure out which one among them is the killer. What Vera does not expect is to form friendships with her customers and start to care for each and every one of them. As a protective mother hen, will she end up having to give one of her newfound chicks to the police? So I really like Jesse Hughes with Dando's writing style because it's really good and also because at a time she grew up in Singapore which is where I'm from right so she uses some of the Singlish words as well which just it feels so good to see my country my country's language being represented you know and her books are always super ridiculously funny so that's why it's on this list the next one The Love Wager by Lynn Painter Lynn Painter wrote Mr. Wrong Number which I gave 3 stars to Halle Piper is turning over a new leaf after barely crawling out of a hotel room. She decides it's time to become a full-on adult. She gets a new apartment, a new haircut, and a new wardrobe, but when she logs into the dating app that she has determined will find her new love, she sees none other than Jack, the guy whose room she has snuck out of. Through the app and after the joint agreement that they are absolutely not interested in each other, Jack and Halle become partners in their respective searches for the one. They text each other about their dates, often scheduling them at the same restaurant so that if things don't go well, the two of them can get tacos afterwards. Spoiler, they get a lot of tacos together. Discouraged by the lack of prospects, Jack and Hallie make a wager to see who can find true love first. But when they agree to be fake dates for a weekend wedding, all bets are off. As they pretend to be a couple, lines become blurred and they each struggle to remember why the other was a bad idea to begin with. I think yes, you can tell I really love fake dating. So yeah, that's why this is on this list. Okay, the last one coming out in March is Flower Heart. This one, as I was compiling this list, I stumbled across this book and it immediately came onto this list because the cover, look at how beautiful it is, oh my gosh. The vibes, oh my gosh. So let me tell you what the synopsis is about. It says perfect for fans of Margaret Rogerson and Tamora Pierce and it's a standalone YA debut. It's a stunning cottage core fantasy romance about a girl with powerful and violent magic which she must learn to control or lose everything she loves. Can you see why I immediately put this on this list? Clara's magic has always been wild, but it's never been dangerous. Then a simple touch causes poisonous flowers to bloom in her father's chest. The only way to heal him is to cast an extremely difficult spell that requires perfect control. And the only person willing to help is her former best friend Xavier, who's grown from a sweet, shy child into a mysterious and distant young man. Xavier names a terrible price in return, knowing Clara will give anything to save her father. As she struggles to reconcile the new Xavier with the boy she once loved, she discovers their bargain is only one of the heavy secrets he's hiding. And as she hunts for the truth, she instead finds the root of a terrible darkness that's taken hold in the queendom. A darkness only Clara's magic is powerful enough to stop. Yeah, I'm so excited. I love standalones because they're just generally easier to get to. And now we are moving on to April. Okay, two books coming out April 4. The first one is The Plus One, which is part of A Brush With Love that companion series. So I have yet to get to the second book, which is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake, but The Plus One is still on my anticipated list. This one is coming out April 4. I really enjoyed A Brush With Love at a certain point in the book, but in the end, I ended up giving it 3 stars. So I hope the Lizzie Blake's best mistake and the plus one will be better. What starts out as a fake wedding date turns into something these childhood enemies never expected in the next sparkling romantic comedy by Maisie Eddings. It's all fake dating, oh my gosh. This video is getting too long. That's all I'm gonna say for this, okay? <laughs> Next one is Silver in the Bone, which is a new series by Alexandra Bracken who wrote Law. Number one New York Times best-selling author, Alexandra Bracken cements her status as one of the top fantasy authors, writing today in this stunning series opener inspired by Arthurian legend and fueled by love, revenge, and pure adrenaline. Oh, she also wrote the Darkest Minds trilogy, which is YA, which is why I'm so excited for this as well. For now, there's two books in this series. Coming out April 11 is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This is a novel of terrible first impressions, hilarious second chances, and the joy in finding your perfect match from a true talent. The two main characters exchange letters, so they're like pen pals. So cute. Abby Jimenez, I've read The Friend Zone, The Happy Ever After Playlist, Part of Your World, Life's Too Short. Basically, all the books this author has written so far. <laughs> so, I'm definitely gonna be reading Yours Truly. Coming out April 25th is The Happy Lace. Emily Henry, I have read Book Lovers and People We Meet on Vacation. I really liked Book Lovers, not so much of People We Meet on Vacation. A couple who broke up months ago make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends in this glittering and wise new novel. It's always the pretend dating, fake dating, fake partnerships that always get me. 
and it's Emily Henry so okay last book in April it's In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune so I read Under the Whispering Door and The House in the Cerulean Sea both of which are linked up above this one is about three robots who live in a strange little home built in the branches of a grove of trees a human lives there as well and they are family hidden and safe but one day they are no longer hidden and safe and together, the rest of the family needs to journey across the country to rescue one of their family members from decommissioning or reprogramming. Sounds so cute. Oh my gosh, okay. Now we are moving on to May. Only one book. The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Coming out May 16. Sparks fly when a romance novelist and a documentary filmmaker join forces to craft the perfect Hollywood love story and take both of their careers to the next level. But only if they can keep the chemistry between them from taking the whole thing off script. I'm just super excited. So many romances on this list. Moving on to June. Only one book as well. Business of Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I have read Weather Girl, which I gave four stars. This one is about a ghostwriter and a struggling actor who help each other on the page and in the bedroom. Any books about writing, I am instantly intrigued. And it's a romance by Rachel Lynn Solomon. So now we skip all the way to September. Coming out September 1, Sword Catcher. This one is also by Cassandra Clare. And if you know, I have so many Cassandra Clare books because she's an author by author, also read author. So it's natural that this book is on this list. It's the first book in a high fantasy series. It's the tale of a young man raised to be the body double for an unworthy prince, a young woman destined to change the world, and a host of other characters, criminals, princes, magicians, and warriors. So I can't remember which video was it but I remember saying how although I love Cassandra Clare she has only been writing in the Shadowhunters world so I really wanted to read a book by her in which it's not set in the Shadowhunters world and I didn't even know that this book was coming out next year but we have a book now we have a title as well we also have a title for the next book but not sure when that's gonna come out so I'm really excited for this A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed who wrote Juniper and Torn, thanks so much to Times Reads for sending this over for me to read and review. So I really enjoyed Juniper and Torn. It was my first gothic fantasy, if I remember correctly. I gave it four stars. A study in drowning. When architecture student Effie wins a contest to design her favorite author's family manor, she finds herself on a remote, crumbling estate filled with disturbing secrets. With the help of a rival student, Effie must unravel a decades-old mystery. But there are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. It's a bit creepy, it's a bit spooky. It just reminded me of Dark Academia vibes and Halloween vibes which is why I put this on this list. October is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. So my list was outdated because Love Theoretically, I thought it was coming out in October but after Ali Hazelwood announced the cover and everything, she announced that it was going to come out in June 13 instead which is why there's this like interluding clip. As you will know, Ali Hazelwood wrote The Love Hypothesis, Love on the Brain and The Staminist Novellas, all of which I have read. My favourite is still The Love Hypothesis. Rival physicists collide in a vortex of academic feuds and fake dating shenanigans in this delightfully staminist rom-com. <sighs> the main female character's name is Elsie, which is a name that has traumatised me because my name is Elise and people, I have no idea why, but people like to call me Elsie. I don't think it's on purpose, but it's just a name that has haunted me. Again, fake dating, which I love, but I really hope that Ali Hazelwood doesn't include a lot of the oh, he's so big, I'm so small kind of comments again because every book she has written so far has had that and it's getting tiring, so I really hope that that doesn't appear in this book. Back to regular programming. Okay, last book for this video. It is Check and Mate by Ali Hazelwood, coming out November 2023. We don't have a cover, we don't have a synopsis, but... I mean, Ali Hazel Wood is an auto-buy, auto-read author. So it makes sense that this book is on this list even though I know nothing about the book so far. And yeah, that brings me to the end of this super long video. If you're still watching, please comment the emoji with the star eyes because that's how I feel about all of these releases coming out in 2023. I hope this video helped introduce you to more releases that you may not have known were coming out next year. 
in the comments below let me know what is a book that you're anticipating in 2023 that's all for this video please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more of such videos i hope you're having a great day or a great week whenever or wherever you're watching this remember to hydrate yourself and yeah i'll see you in my next video